These are the new Peter McKinnon Lumo camera bags from Nomadic. We're gonna find out the truth to see if they are really worth it. I first saw these bags at Vid Summit when they were first announced in person. I was able to get some first-hand impressions with the bags and it caught enough of my interest that I pre-ordered them all. I mainly wanted the 12 liter sling to be able to fit a lot of my stuff in a small bag, but by the end of this review, you'll realize why I chose a different one instead. Prior to using these new Luma bags, I was previously using the 35 liter Peak Design travel bag, and I loved it. It was great. But the only not so lovely part was that it was bulky for me for everyday use, and the straps were not so comfortable when I did pack heavy. At this point, I've used the Luma bags for about a month, using them for trips to church and when I go on lunch dates with my wife. From the smallest to the largest, we have the 9 liter, the 12 liter, and 18 liter bags. We originally had an 8 liter sling, so it's nice to have a little more space with the 9 liter. Of course, it's ideal for smaller lenses and setups. If you already have the 8 liter sling, you may be looking to get the other two bags instead. For the 12 liter, we are getting closer to a laptop bag space capacity, which is usually around 13 and 15 liters. Camera shooters will appreciate this for deeper spaces for our lenses and all that good stuff. Then we have the 18 liter, which I find to have a great overall carrying capacity that just has a little less depth for our gear, but more on that later. We'll give Nomadic points for variety. For each of these bags, we get those YKK zippers that are tough. While on the outer shell of each of these bags, we have a little weather resistance with the 900D polyester nylon. So for this reason, I ordered a Rainfly for the 18 liter just in case. Unfortunately, there is no Rainfly for the slings. However, a Nomadic rep has let me know that in some rain, your gear will be safe and keep your stuff dry inside. Just don't plan to expose your bag to heavy rain weather. If you're not one to even bother bringing your camera in harsh weather or even travel that much, then these bags are still great. But if you're traveling in unpredictable weather conditions, you may want to stick to a Rainfly or lean towards the original Peter McKinnon bags. All right, let's get a closer look at the bags. Starting with the slings, I appreciate the large rings for adjusting the straps up and down. Nomadic did a really good job making it sweet and sleek. But if you look closely between the two slings, you'll notice that only the 12 liter has the movable cushion strap, whereas the 9 liter does not. If you're coming from the original 8 liter sling, you may miss this, but I found no issues with this just because what I carry in the 9 liter doesn't really need to be cushioned. Just be on the lookout to see if your bag has an inverted strap like my 12 liter did. Nomadic did let me know that you can undo this by twisting the strap like so. Thank you, Cam. In terms of the backpack, we have lightly mesh padded straps. They're not as cushioned as their other premium bags, which I was a little disappointed about, but I was surprisingly unbothered when using the bag because it was so light overall that I didn't have any complaints about feeling discomfort on my shoulders. Most of the time when we carry these premium bags, they already weigh four to five pounds without anything in them yet. Then they just end up cutting into your shoulders. The 18 liter bag weighs about half that and the straps feel more flat and flush on my shoulders. I'm curious to see if my experience will change in the long term, but so far it's been a comfortable carry for these straps. If you plan on packing some heavy gear, do know that there are no waist straps or a means to attach one. If you think you'll be packing that much, then just look towards the Peter McKinnon 35 liter. These Luma bags were meant to be light, and I believe the straps on them are appropriate enough to comfortably carry what you can pack in them. What about laptop size capacity? In terms of laptops, the 18 liter can fit up to a 16 inch laptop. But if you want a separate iPad pouch, you won't find one. Fortunately, when placing my 14 inch MacBook inside the 18 liter bag, it still felt roomy enough to be able to reach and remove without any claustrophobic issues. My laptop wasn't too close to the edges that I couldn't fit my hand to reach for it and I didn't have to struggle just removing it. It was easy. But if there's anything to note about the laptop sleeve, it's that Nomadic placed it towards the top of the bag and not towards the side. Thanks, Nomadic. This was one of my issues with the original everyday 25 liter bag. I wanna reach for the single zipper for the laptop, but instead I end up grabbing the zipper for the main compartment. Although there is no iPad sleeve, I personally would love to see the 12 liter sling come with an iPad divider as I love to use this as an everyday sling. But perhaps others who use the Nomadic bags don't really fancy for one. I mean, they already have new flexible dividers, so let's add one more tablet divider, right? Regardless, the laptop space is more than adequate and you'll be confident packing yours in there. 
All right, let's talk about what's in the bag. I'll be focusing on what I pack rather than stuffing these bags with the most gear as possible because sometimes pain is the only thing you gain from overpacking. For the 9 liter, as spacious as it is, I still find my Sony FX30 with the cage on to be a little too big as the body still sticks out from the bottom half of the sling. I'm still able to close it, but it's still a bit of a tight fit, making me avoid packing anything in the mesh pockets on that same side. Without the camera cage, it is more flush, but I often keep the camera cage on. The Sony FX30 is comparable to the other full frame camera bodies that Sony has, so if you're running something smaller like a Sony A6000 series cameras, you should be fine. But if there's any feature to be excited about with these sling bags, it's the magnetic latch. If you wanna quickly access your different lenses and whatever accessories in your bag in the middle of your photo shoot, you can quickly do that just by lifting and closing the lid without having to touch the zippers whatsoever. For those of you who like a smaller kit, nine liters is plenty. I was still able to pack a spare Sony Z battery in the mesh pocket up top and then a DJI Osmo Pocket 3 on one side with the battery pack on the other side. Yeah, I could have stacked these all together in one side, but oh well. Then on the outside, I stuck my AirPods in the zippered flap. I do like this bag over the original 8 liter as the edges of the inside compartment are more open as compared to being a little concaved like the 8 liter. With the 8 liter, it was a little difficult for me to remove my camera setup when it took up most of the space. How's it like with the 12 liter? The 12 liter is a bit of a different story as I'm able to fit a little more with the extra depth that we have. I can comfortably fit my DJI Osmo Pocket 3 setup on one side and throw a battery bank on the other side. Then in the mesh pockets, we again have our Sony Z batteries. If you've got a full frame setup, this is a sling bag that you would gravitate to as it can easily fit your bigger bodies and bigger lenses. If you've got a tall lens like the Sony 90mm f2.8, you may be able to fit that in there. But if you're looking at something like a 70 to 200 lens, you may just be able to fit it horizontally like I am here with the Sony FX30 and the Sigma 50 to 100 millimeter. Although I don't have any full frame setups, my Sony FX30 with the Sigma 18 to 35 is about a comparable size and this just fits comfortably in the 12 liter. What of the backpack? In the 18 liter bag, I've packed my Sony FX30 with the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter and laid it flat like so. You'll quickly realize when using this bag that you won't be able to pack your camera bodies on the side as we lack the depth that we would have with Peter's original bags. Not the biggest issue for me, but something to keep in mind. Moving on, we'll leave room for a second FX30, which is currently filming this shot. Now we can simply film the rest. I'll throw in my BTS camera, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 with the battery pack, as well as the DJI Mic 2. I don't have one, but perhaps you'd like to throw a smaller drone up there instead. At the side and at the bottom, we can throw some lighter items like DJI Mic 2 wireless mics and Nisi filters. Across from the main compartment, we have mesh pockets with stitched in dividers, and that's where I like to keep my SD card holder up at top. On the right, I'll keep my extra Sony Z batteries. Then on the bottom, we can keep our battery bank that I have from RAF Power alongside a USB-C charging cable. I love these stitched dividers, by the way. Then when we close our bag, on the back, we can pack the Coman Video H tripod. I like a lot of space in my bags, so I appreciate the design of the open compartments for all of these bags. In regards to the 18 liter, it really feels like it provides the best value so far because it feels bigger than 18 liters and on par with the other 25 liter bags that I've tried before. Even though we've packed it like so, is there a way to access our gear without completely opening it up flat lay style for the backpack? Yes, we do have side access to be able to reach in for a camera setup. It's a single zipper with no security feature, if that's something you're into. And speaking of security, we don't have any secret pockets for IDs if that's important to you as well. Beside the side access, we also have a top bunk access that we can get to with the zippers. And if you want a deeper top bunk, you can go ahead and adjust this as the dividers are Velcro. So the top bunk could be as deep or shallow as you want. So far, I've run through many of the features that Nomadic has brought to the table. But is there anything else though? Although I can't say that these bags have a particular new feature that no other bag has, aside from the magnetic lids on their slings, I would say that it has taken a lot of the functionalities from other bags, made them well, and simplified it down. The bag is solid, no gimmicks. If anything, your backpack stands upright depending on how you load it. Sling bags also have attachment loops that I don't think I'll use, but 
could use for something like my keys with a carabiner. But should these bags fail you with anything that I've talked about so far, they fortunately have a lifetime guarantee. I've tried it. When I first got my 12 liter sling, I thought the inverted strap was unfixable. They replaced it and then my second 12 liter sling came with an inverted strap. And then we found out that it was fixable. But hey, lifetime guarantee. So what's it all gonna cost in the end? Well, it's $219 for the 18 liter, $139 for the 12 liter, and $119 for the nine liter. As much as I enjoy the nomadic products and how functional they are, I almost feel like it may not be as worth it for the slings. Yes, they are solid when it comes to the overall structure, the form doesn't easily smush, and the magnets are a great way to access your belongings without wasting time. However, for many beginners and amateurs, choosing something like a low pro sling bag would be a better value as it provides comparable space and maybe even a little more room for all your small things. So if you feel pressured to buy the latest gear, don't. Without a doubt, these Luma slings, they're sleek, premium. And if you want that confidence and experience, you're gonna get what you paid for. But for most, I would recommend the backpack if that's the kind of purchase you foresee yourself making in the near future. Don't let the 18 liter label fool you because after using this bag a couple of times, it has never felt like it was not enough. This alongside its sling bags has the right amount of comfort, the structural support to protect my gear and pad it without having to add the bulk that most premium bags can have. If you're looking for a premium camera bag without breaking the bank, these Luma bags, they're worth it. But what do you think? If you're second guessing, perhaps you'll be more interested in these bags over here. 